Right. So in this video, we will be talking about how to solve quartic equations using Euler's method. So let's just get the brief understanding of Euler's method. So Euler's method pretty much states that when you have a polynomial x of 4 plus bx squared plus ux plus r equals 0, the solution typically looks like x is equal to the square root of z1 plus the square root of z2 plus the square root of z3 all over 2, where z is a solution to a cubic. So we have to use the resolvent cubic after splitting the quartic into two quadratic factors, x squared plus sx plus u times x squared minus sx plus v. And after doing all of the simplifying, we get a cubic in terms of s squared, where we could set s squared equal to z, which is where we get s is equal to the square root of z, which is why we have z1, z2, z3. So we're using all three roots of the resolvent cubic. So let's go ahead and look at a quartic, which is x to the 4 plus 3x squared minus 26x minus 30 is equal to 0. So we're going to split this into two quadratic factors, which are x squared plus sx plus u times x squared minus sx plus v is equal to 0. After expanding everything out, we will get that u plus v is equal to 3 plus s squared, and v minus u is equal to negative 26 over s, and uv is equal to negative 30. And to find u and v, we simply have to go ahead and subtract or add the first and second equation, which if we add from top to bottom, we get 2v is equal to 3 plus s squared minus 26 over s. And solving for v by dividing by 2, we end up getting that v is equal to 1 half times 3 plus s squared minus 26 over s. And u is simply just a sign change of the negative. So u is equal to 1 half times 3 plus s squared plus 26 over s. So now we're plugging in u and v into our third equation. We will end up getting 1 fourth times s squared plus 3 minus 26 over s times s squared plus 3 plus 26 over s is all equal to negative 30. Multiplying both sides by 4 s squared, since we have the s in the first factor and also in the second factor, we have to multiply by s squared, where we just distribute s into each of the expressions. So after that, we multiply by 4, this 4 goes away and we get negative 120 and times s squared. And the left hand side will just be s cubed plus 3s minus 26 times s cubed plus 3 plus 26. And that is pretty much equal to negative 120s squared. Now we're going to expand the left-hand side by just using the distributive property. So we have s cubed times s cubed is x to the 6, and s cubed times 3, that is plus 3, 
s cubed or well we also forgot the s there so it's going to be s to the 4 and it's going to be minus 26 or plus 26 s cubed and also we just continue with the 3s onto everything on the right hand side of the second factor so it's going to be plus 3s to the 4 plus 9s squared plus and 26 times 3 that is 78s and we just continue with the negative 26 we have negative 26s cubed and we also have minus 78s and we also have minus 26 squared and that is equal to negative 120s squared so here we see we have a sixth degree polynomial and of course we really don't know what to do but in reality we could cancel some things out here we could obviously see that we could cancel out the s cubed since it's positive and negative 26 and we could also cancel out the s which is 78 and negative 78 s and after that we end up just receiving the following which is s to the 6 and then 3 plus 3 that is 6 s to the 4 and then plus 9 s squared and minus 26 squared that is going to be minus 676 that is equal to negative 120 s squared adding 120 s squared we end up getting s to the 6 plus 6 s to the 4 plus 129 s squared minus 676 and that is all equal to 0. Now setting s is equal to z or s squared equal to z we end up getting z cubed plus 6 z squared plus 129 z minus 676 is equal to zero. So now what we're gonna do is pretty much start off by solving the cubic. So we could just erase all of this. Since we already know what u is, we could just put v is equal to one half times s squared plus 3 minus 26 over s and u is just the uh, positive sign of that of the negative 26. so here we will have z cubed plus 6 z squared plus 129 minus 676 is equal to 0 129z so we're going to go ahead and start off by solving our cubic the long way. So what we're going to do is start by depressing the cubic. So we have z is equal to y minus 2. And we're going to simply use a little bit of calculus. Because if we just plug in z, then the 6z squared is going to cancel out. But we're going to use a little bit of calculus. So we have y cubed, and we're taking the first derivative, or f prime of z, is equal to 3, z squared plus 12z plus 129. And we're playing in negative 2, so f prime of negative 2 is equal to 3 times 4, that is 12. And this is minus 24 plus 129. We get negative 12 plus 129, and we get 117, so that's plus 117y. And to just find the constant, we will have to plug in negative 2 into our original cubic, so that's going to be negative 8 plus 24 minus... 
minus 676. So here we're going to get 16 and 258 or negative 258 minus 676. That is minus 934 and 934 or 16 minus 934. That is negative 918. So we get minus 918 is equal to zero. So we see that we have this depressed cubic with huge values. And we could simply now go ahead and use the cubic formula, which is y is equal to the cube root of negative q over 2 plus the square root of q over 2 squared plus p over 3 cubed and then plus the second cube root which is negative q over 2 and minus the square root of everything that's inside of the square root so let's go ahead and get y is equal to cube root and 918 divided by 2 that is 459 plus the square root and we have q over 2 so that is going to be 459 squared plus 117 divided by 3 that is 39 cubed and this is 270,000 and that is not a perfect square, so we have the square of 270,000 plus the cube root of 459 minus the square root of 270,000. And we could just plug that into a calculator to see what we get, which we will see what the value is. So 459 plus the square of 270,000 plus the cube root of 459 minus the square root of 270,000. And that value comes out to be 6. So this cubic all along had a rational root. So here, since we have y equals 6, z is going to be equal to 4. So we found our z value. So that's our z1. So we can now get our solution for x, which is going to be x is equal to the square root of z1, which is 4. Which that simplifies it to, but we'll leave it like that. And now we're going to factor out 4 from our cubic. So we have to use synthetic division, that is going to be 4. Then we have 1, 6, 129, and negative 676. So we're just going to drop down the 1. So we get 1. We're going to multiply 1 times 4. And we get 4. And add from top to bottom 6 plus 4, that is 10. And here we have 4 times 10, that is... 40 and 169 plus 40 that is 16 or 129 plus 40 is 169 and 169 times 40 or times 4 that is 676 which is 0 so we can go ahead and get our second our second and third solutions which are z squared plus 10 z plus 169 And just using the quadratic formula, we end up getting this z is equal to, or z2 is equal to negative 10 plus the square root of 10 squared, which is 100. And 169 times 4, that is minus 676. And then subtracting that, we end up getting 576. 
uh, and it's i so taking the square root of 576 that is 24 so it is plus 24i all over 2 which then results in 5 negative 5 plus 12i and z3 is equal to negative 5 minus 12i as z3 is just the conjugate of our complex root. So we end up having our two complex roots, which are now going to be the square root of negative 5 plus 12i plus the square root of negative 5 minus 12i all over 2. So now what we have to do is evaluate the square root of negative 5 plus or minus 12i. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So it is negative 5 plus 12i. And we want this to be equal to a complex number, a plus bi. First, what we're going to do is get rid of the square root. So we have negative 5 plus 12i. And this gives us a squared plus 2abi minus b squared. And making a system of equations from this, we end up getting a squared minus b squared is equal to negative 5. And 2ab is equal to 12. Where ab is simply 6. So dividing by b, we end up getting a is equal to 6 over b. Plugging in 6 over b into a, we end up getting 36 minus b to the 4 is equal to negative 5 b squared. Rearranging the by quadratic, we end up getting b to the 4 minus 5 b squared minus 36 is equal to 0. We can set b squared equal to t. So we have t is equal to our t squared minus 5t minus 36 is equal to 0, where t is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 144, that is 169, and that is 13, since the square root of 169 is 13, we will have over 2. So just looking at the positive sign, we're going to get t is equal to 18 over 2, which is equal to 9, and b is equal to 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. So now we're going to go ahead and find a, and a is equal to 2. So the square root of negative 5 plus 12i is equal to 2 plus 3i. And the square root of negative 5 minus 12i is equal to 2 minus 3i. So we're only just looking at 1 of the conjugates, that means that the b value should also be negative or a conjugate of the square root of minus 5 plus 12i and negative 5 minus 12i. So now we could look at the solution, which is x is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 3i. plus 2 minus 3i all over 2. The imaginary numbers cancel out, and we are left with 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6, over 2, and that equals to 3. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is also just switch the sign of either 
one of our square roots. So for that, the second solution is going to be two, and then the sign change will be on the two square roots, which is negative five plus or minus 12i, and they're both going to be negative in our second solution. So it is minus two minus three i and minus two plus three i all over two. The imaginary numbers cancel out once again, and we see that we're left with just negative two over two, which our solution is negative one. And for our third solution, we're going to get that the the four is going to be negative, but the square root of four is negative now, so it's going to be negative two plus two plus three i plus two minus three or two plus three i wait this is negative plus negative okay so it is going to be minus two plus three i and we end up getting all over two and this turns out to be negative two plus six i over two and we get negative one plus three i and the other solution is just a conjugate so it is negative one or x is also equal to negative one minus three i so let's go ahead and verify our two solutions that we have at least the rational solutions and then we'll verify if the complex solutions are also true. So let's test negative one and we're gonna use synthetic division for that. So we have negative one. We have one, zero, three, negative 26 and negative 30. Drop down the one, multiply by negative one now, negative one, and that is negative one. Multiply again, that is one. Three plus one is four. Four times negative one, that is negative four, that is negative 30. And negative one times negative 30 is positive 30, and that gives zero. So x minus or plus one is a root, and our cubic factor is x cubed minus x squared plus four x minus 30. And here we will have to test x equals three now. So we have three and one, negative one, four, negative 30. And we have to drop down the one, multiply by three, that is three minus one, that is two. And we have two times three, that is six. And that is 10 and three times 10 that is 30 and that's zero so we end up getting x plus 1 times x minus 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 10. Now let's go ahead and solve the quadratic to see if the solutions are correct and if they match so x squared plus 2x plus 10 is equal to zero and this is also a perfect square as x plus 1 squared plus 9 is equal to 0 and we got x plus 1 squared is equal to negative 9 taking the square root of both sides we end up getting x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 3i and x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 3i which are the solutions we got just from using Euler's method so as we see Euler's method does work, though it's just time consuming. But it gives you all four roots just using all three solutions of the cubic resolvent. So that is a pretty neat example where everything worked out perfectly. And just Note this to yourself. If you have a irreducible quartic that doesn't have any rational solutions or any easy complex roots like 
negative 1 plus 3i or any rational complex solutions, then Euler's method might be a bit harder, but it will always be the same step-by-step -step process. So, thanks for watching and hopefully you learned something with this. And I hope you have a good day.